This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video review of the FusionWorks RAW aluminum iPhone 4 case. Now this case retails for $65.99, which honestly is pretty low considering it's made out of aluminum. Those cases get extremely pricey. And it comes in seven different color variations. Royal Steel Blue, Burnt Orange, Gunmetal Gray, Steel Silver, Satin Black, Burnt Yellow, and of course, and as I have displayed here, Fire Red. Now it also comes in an eighth color and they call it the special edition type three. I honestly can't really see what the difference is between that and the gunmetal gray. Maybe it has a little bit of a graphite tint to it, but it's currently sold out on their website. So, you know, what can you do? Anyway, uh, we have the case here. It comes in a beautiful, good looking tin case. On the bottom you have a made in the USA. The case is made in the USA, so is this tin case. It's good to see that stuff is still made in the good old US of A because especially in this market stuff is exported to China. And uh, it's not, you know, that's not a problem, but it's good to see that this is made here using US labor. When you pop the tin open, you're going to find your serial number. Actually, well, you're not going to find that. It comes in a bag and I stuck it. It's a sticker. I stuck it to the inside of the case because I knew I would lose it. But there's your serial number and then install instructions. No instructions are included uh, rather than the instructions in the case. So you just go to fusionworks.com slash install and they hook you up. We're going to pull this felt lining off. And uh, oh, by the way, they also include a hexagonal wrench for installing the case. And then they include two additional screws. Uh, along with the included force. If you lose one here and there, or strip one, hopefully you don't, but if you do, these are left over and they give you those so you don't have to go hunt for more. We're gonna pull the case out and you may be thinking to yourself, whoa, Quinn, um, it's kinda, there's no sides. And that's what I got. The main response on Facebook and Twitter was like, whoa, this case is like nothing. How does this even protect your phone? Now, the purpose of this case and the problem I've had with aluminum cases in the past is two things happen. First of all, it becomes bulky. Aluminum can't be as thin as plastic. And so you often find that when you stick an aluminum case on your iPhone, it gets really bulky, really uncomfortable, and it just isn't the most practical case to use. I've also noticed that reception takes a crap. If you guys remember my element case vapor video for iPhone 4, that was a disaster because, um, you know, not only was the case bulky, but it blocked all the antennas, so you almost had no service. And with the iPhone 4 not having a great reputation for getting service well, that was an issue. FusionWorks resolved these issues with aluminum cases, got rid of the bulk, and got rid of the attenuation. So we're going to install this case, and it just has four screws. Boom, 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 and boom. Uh, you can put it on the front or the back. The case is identical on both sides, so there's no real specific way you have to put it on. It's, well, it's identical on all four sides. So again, it doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, but in all their promotional pictures, it has the screws on the back. Plus, I think that looks better anyway. So that's what I've been doing. But again, I'm pretty sure you can install it any way you'd like. First of all, I would like to note that this is T4 aluminum. And the colors really pop. My camera isn't showing it right now. But it is a beautiful, gorgeous looking case. Um, and as I stated earlier, it's a T4 aluminum, which honestly to me is layman's terms. But I have dropped this twice, not on purpose, but it has been very, very resilient to falling. None of the paint's chipped off. Um, it's anodized aluminum, and you know, you're know you gonna get really quite a bit of strength out of that. Also, it's extremely light. This is probably lighter than most plastic cases I've used. I think it's a mere, I don't even remember how many ounces it is, but this thing is seriously like air almost. You'd forget this was in your hand if you left it there for more than five seconds. But Let's install it nonetheless, and uh, I'll come back once I have it installed. Okay, so we're done. We've installed the screws. Um, one, two, three, four. The only issues with installing that I can think of is if you did them too tight, you may run the risk of stripping the screws. Obviously, that would not be an easy feat to get the case off. It would be possible, but certainly not something you'd want to do. And that's really the only issue is if you over tighten, there's a chance that you'll strip the aluminum. Unlikely, but if you're some Goliath or master of strength, or you're just clueless and can't tell when it's tight, you may run that risk. And not only would that destroy the screw, uh, destroy the case and um, the possibilities of 
being able to take the case off your phone. So that's obviously not something you'd want to do, but it shouldn't be an issue for most. Now let's go over the overall design and layout of this case. As we look at the right side here, we have full access to the SIM tray if you needed that. Other than that though, everything's open. On the top, as I stated earlier, all the sides are open, so everything up top is accessible. Everything down the side is easily accessible. The buttons and the vibrate switch are both extremely easy to access from both uh, distances. It's no reach. And then on the bottom you have, of course, your speakerphone, microphone, and 30-pin dock connector access. Now people ask me, well, Quinn, is this going to scratch my phone? Is it going to do any good? And the answer is no, it won't scratch your phone. And yes, it will do good. Because as you can see here, there's a bit of a rev... <laughs> Not editing that out, by the way. There's a bit of a reservoir, um, and there's a bit of a ditch from the phone itself to the top of the case. So you technically have lay on the table design on all angles. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're not going to run into issues because since that is raised or elevated, your phone is nowhere near the pavement or wherever it lands or whatever happens to it. It'll be free from scratches, blemishes, and the rest. Should have said, and the like. Anywho, so that applies to all sides, but the buttons are all easily accessible. As for actually using the device, um, you know, everything is very easily accessed. The sides here are pretty smooth, so when you're typing, you might bump it a little bit, and if I had one complaint, that would be it. You know, you kind of run into this drop issue. Uh, but you have full lay-on-the-table design on the top and on the bottom, and it's pretty big lay-on-the-table design. I mean, that's a good, sounds pretty paltry when I say it, but it's a good eighth of an inch. Um, you know, there's quite a bit of lay on the table design, and I wouldn't be worried about sliding this across the table to my friends. You're not going to run into issues with scratching your screen. Now, if you are a psycho protection freak, which I know some are, I was at first, I've kind of died off, and I'm not too worried about scratching my phone. I know it's a sin to say that, but um, one thing you're going to run into with this case, and FusionWorks has even acknowledged the issue, is since there's the felt lining on the inside, um, there's felt lining on the inside of the case so that when it's on, it doesn't scratch the phone. But the problem with this is if you do have a screen shield on front and or back, you may run into issues with that lifting up or bubbling. I did have a screen shield on. It was one of the thinner ones I had, and it was really bizarre because at some points it would bubble and some points it wouldn't. It's almost like it depended on the temperature of the room. I don't know, but I'm just letting you know if you plan on using this with a screen shield, plan on seeing bubbles. FusionWork acknowledged this and said, well, you could technically cut a little bit of the inside layer of the felt lining off, and you should alleviate that problem, but that's not something I want to or am willing to do. So, uh, pretty much without further ado, though, that's the case. There's not a lot to it, and it's highly durable. You can drop it on all instances. Um, this aluminum is highly protective, it's extremely light, and it's not very bulky in your hand. It feels quite nice, actually. Um, one problem with it is it's a little bit rigid, and you know the corners are a little bit sharp, and it's not always the most comfortable to hold in your hand. It's by no means uncomfortable, but it isn't my first pick, or, oh, this case feels great in the hand. It's a little bit more rigid, a little bit more raw. Ha ha, I'm punny. And uh, you know, you may experience a little bit of discomfort when holding it for long periods of time. Other than that though, the FusionWorks RAW case is hands down the best aluminum case I've reviewed. There's no attenuation. Um, signal wise, I've never experienced anything but uh, three to five bars. You know, I've never dropped to no service with this case on. And everywhere I get service, I'd get service with the RAW. It's a good case, $65. It's a little bit steep, but you do get awesome aluminum craftsmanship made here in the good old US of A. It comes in beautifully vibrant colors. I'm sure it would protect your phone from a drop. And uh, you know, if you're willing to shell out the 65 bucks, it's definitely a good option. This is Quinn, that's Nazi iPhone Guy. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, rate, and comment. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks. On their side, they also have a special edition Type 3 Fusion Raw MILF iPhone 4 case. Not MILF. MIL iPhone 4 case.